All right. Well, my name is Than. It is short for Nathaniel. When I was born, I didn't look like an H or Nathan. I looked like a Than. So that is what my parents went with. I have told that I don't know how many times now. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> it's a couple things. Uh, first of all, I have to apologize. I don't have any slides this week. And th yeah, and that is because um, my wife back there, um, we're nursing, and we're coming to the end of that, so she got mastitis really, really bad, and apparently it's something that women can actually die from, and so when she went in, they said that this was one of the worst cases that they had recorded. The only thing, the only reason why they did not admit her is because she was able to stay upright, which she was standing and she walked in, otherwise, otherwise she would have been admitted immediately, and, uh, and apparently they even had the ER on standby for later that night if she had to come in. That's how bad it was. I mean, at one point, we were laying in bed and, I, of course, was just bawling my eyes out, praying over her and everything like that. And I said to her, I'm like, Dude, I'm like don't die. You can't die. And because we have three kids, I'd be lost without her. Uh, so, so anyway, but yeah, she actually, she paused for a moment. She goes, I think I'll be okay. But when we talk about it now, she's actually like, you know, I, in that moment, I actually thought that I was going to go. She's like, not that I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. But, you know, I, I, cause obviously she's going to go be with Jesus. I mean, who wouldn't want that? I mean, but uh, yeah, so it was, it was pretty serious. And because of that, I missed about five days of work because someone had to watch the three kids. We homeschool and, and all that because putting five kids into, or three kids into nursing or uh, kids care, um, uh, daycare, daycare. Uh, <laughs> daycare is ridiculous. So for five days, that was, that's more than my month's salary. So, so yeah, so naturally we, we stay home, but uh so yeah, so this kind of put me a little bit behind. And then I had a nice little spiritual attack, as I always do. I get just sinus infection. This is probably the most clear I've been, so praise God for that. And then also, Satan was nice and gave me this wonderful just spirit of confusion over, over all of this. So I met with Kurt, and praise God I did, because I, I took chapter 7, and I took it to just like the worst <laughs> Like it was fire and brimstone, and it it was bad, and so yeah, so I had to do a rewrite. So I'm going to come up a little shorter than what I had intended uh, on this, but but yeah. So anyway, so now that aside, oh, I also because of all that, I didn't bring any memes this time. So again, I'm sorry. I'll bring an extra right. I'll bring an extra one next time. I promise. Okay. So all that aside, let's go ahead and open with prayer here, real quick. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for being here today, bringing us all together, Lord, for the, the roads to be just clear enough that we made it in, and for the weather to be just good enough that we were able to get here. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the people that are traveling, Lord, just have your hand on them and guide them to their destination without incident. Heavenly Father, and if it takes them a little extra longer to get there, Lord, it's because you have that timing in place. You have that you have that for them. And Heavenly Father, we just invite the Holy Spirit to be here, Lord, and to be with us, to watch over us, bless us throughout the week, and, and just open our ears and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <coughs> All right, and like I said, because I didn't get to, you know, be super, super in-depth in this, I do, I do uh, advise that you buy the book. Uh, that, that we have available. Also, just pick up the, the Bible and read these chapters because there is, there's a lot in these. Uh, like I, it's hard to even do it justice in this amount of time. So, so yeah, so here we go. All right, obviously we know that um, the book of Corinthians was written by Paul, and he was apostle, used to be known as Saul, and he was a Pharisee, and he was one of them that actually would hunt down the Christians and bring them to trial, you know, put them to death, basically, in front of people uh, for speaking out against the Jewish traditions. And so, one day while he was on the road going to a city, he met a newly risen Jesus, and 
Jesus is like, dude, what? Why, uh, why are you following me? Why are you persecuting us? Don't do that. And so he struck him blind and said, okay, go to the city. There's going to be a Christian there waiting for you. He's going to pray on you. You're going to be great. And then after that, I want you to go and I want you to spread the gospel. So he did. And one of the ways that he did that was he went into all these churches and he'd help build them up and he'd plant the churches and get them going and all the stuff. And then he would leave. And one of these was the, the church in Corinth. Now, this one was one of his favorite places. Um, it was a major port city. Uh, there was lots of temples, so like the Greek and Roman gods. And so, you know, it was just really convicted to have God there to overtake this place. And, of course, because it was a port city, it was also an economic power or uh, an economic powerhouse. So, you know, he could help build the funds that he needed to spread the gospel throughout Europe and so when he was there, he spent about a year and a half and um, spreading the word and confirming his calling, as it says in Acts 18. Uh, After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And because he was a tent maker, as they were, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, your blood be on your own hands. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And so we are the Gentiles. And one night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. He said, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. And I no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. And so Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. Like I said before, after he was done teaching them in these churches, he'd leave. So he took off to the next place. And while he was there, um, he kind of heard that the church that he had just left, they were kind of facing some issues. So Paul did as he normally did, and he wrote a sternly worded letter. Uh, to these churches, and it was it covered a whole bunch of things. Again, pick up the book. Like, it is, there's a lot to it. But since I only have seven and eight, I only have to cover a little fraction of it. Um, <coughs> so today I'm going to talk about distraction and perception. So 1 Corinthians 7, it mostly deals with um, the distractions. And kind of with that goes a little bit of the, the end of 6, uh, which speaks about the judging of others. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, I have the right to do anything. You say that, you say, and that's fine, but not everything is beneficial. So you can sit there, you can judge people, but it's not good for you to do it. Only God can judge. Just And there's other stuff in that too. I mean, you're free to do what you want, but it's not going to be good. I was free to eat bacon. I ate a lot of bacon. Pounds of it at a time. You can ask my wife. I'd be creepy about it too. There was one night she was laying in bed and uh, messing around on, her, on Facebook or something like that. And I just walked over to her and I gently nudged her and I just go, soon. Because the bacon was almost done. So, so uh, yeah. So I, that and I drank a lot of monster energy drinks. So much so, in fact, that it gave me congestive heart failure. And I was pretty close to dying, which I've shared that numerous times before. So, yeah. Love bacon. I still eat bacon. I don't drink Monster anymore because it wasn't good for me. But deep fry your bacon. It is amazing. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) So anyway, so (coughs) these things are going to benefit from you because it says in Corinthians 6, 15, and 17, "Do do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? But who is ever united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Meaning, Christ is with us. We are in him. He is in us at all times. And that happened through his, uh, his death on the cross and rebirth. And when we accept that, we are also reborn in that. So you wouldn't purposely ingest poison because it's doing harm to your body. So you wouldn't do these things to bring harm to Christ. Um, you love your body. You care for it. Not with monster energy drinks, but you, <laughs> and pounds and pounds of bacon all at once. So I get that's kind of a bad example. But, uh, but you focus on it. You love it. You care for it. You clean it. You, you seek the doctor when you need help. I mean, you, and all of that. Uh, so, so you can just, you can focus on, on yourself. And speaking of focus, 
One of the things that Paul writes about in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 7 is marriage. Now, marriage is something that is amazing. It is wonderful. I've, I've, I've told the story about how Sarah and I got together, but at one point we were both praying to meet somebody, and it happened to be we were praying on the same night, and we happened to be praying for each other. Like, uh, so it, look how that worked out. But it is a wonderful gift, and it can bring balance to your life, and it can bring comfort, but it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. I mean, some people just, they get into marriage and just angry. My wife is this. My husband is that. My wife is part of multiple mom groups um, that she's starting to actually get out of because it's progressively gotten worse. My husband is an idiot. My husband is, is this. And it's just, it's bad. Those people are distracted. So anyway, so it can become a distract, distraction with marriage. It can take that time away from from spending it with God and focusing on God. Uh, as it says in 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 5, the husband should fulfill his marital duties to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her, her own body but yields it to her husband in the same way. The husband does not have authority over his own body but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourself to prayer and then come together again so Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, when you first read that, it kind of sounds like it just talks about sex. But no, not so. It can talk about anything. I mean, there's all kinds of, of things that you have to do in a marriage. You have to listen to them. And you have to talk with them. Share your feelings. Share your emotions. Share all of that. Um, you have activities that you do. Hobbies. Coming to church going out on a date. Um, some people have book groups together, some Bible studies together, all of this stuff. Bible study is a bad example because it brings you closer to God, but it's contrary to what I'm saying. But these things can be a distraction from taking that time by yourself to find God. And so that's why sometimes it's a good thing. You gotta, you gotta separate for a little bit. You gotta step aside and really just get in there and just really focus so that you can get back on track with what God has for you. But always come back together if you're, if you're married. Come back together immediately because Satan will attack you when you are alone. And he loves to do that. He'll get in your head. You have that alone time. I'm by myself. He's just going to, you know, I'm going to go look at porn since my wife isn't here. I'm going to go speak badly of my husband. I'm going to go do this and that and this and just it builds up. Uh, in a men's group, we're, we're just finishing up with a book called Spirit Wars. And in that, it talks about um, HALT, H-A-L-T, hungry, angry, angry, lonely, tired. And that is when Satan likes to attack you the most. So get back together. The hungry, get a sandwich. That's, that's a big one for my wife. My wife will get hangry, and I'll get angry text messages all throughout the day. And it's, yeah. <laughs> I love you. Uh, no, excuse me, angry, lonely, tired. Um, <clears throat> but then if, like I said before, marriage isn't for everybody. So if, if you're single, um, that's not a problem too. That's also virtuous. That's also amazing. Uh, as it says in 7, 32 and 33, I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs. He has time. He doesn't have to listen. He doesn't have to talk, share his feelings, go to, to the book study and all that stuff. It, so how can he please the Lord? But a married man is concerned about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife. So if you're single, stay single. It's fine. Like Marriage isn't for everybody. Just because there's, there's no activities to distract you from it. I remember when I had the free time, and I when, I when I was first called, I should say this, when I was first called, I was 19. I didn't have a girlfriend, I didn't have anybody. Uh, so I devoted myself to just reading the Bible and all of that. Um, I even worked at a radio station. So the times when I wasn't playing the horrible, horrible country music or the light adult contemporary, uh, <laughs> I would sit there and have a Bible, or um, because I was a little weird, I went through and I read uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, which has all full of allegory and, and all that stuff, which, I don't know, I didn't always see it, but whatever, when you dig into it, it's there, I guess, whatever. but I wasn't 
too terribly off from the Bible from that, but it kept me able to be eternally minded. And that's when you, you're kind of sober in mind. You're, you're focused on what's out there, as it says in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. So if you have been raised with the Messiah, and the raised as in born again with Jesus, um, seek what is above, where the Messiah is, seated at the right hand of God, and set your mind on what is above, not on what is in the earth. So find God in that. Get that, that time alone. Seek God. Focus that image. Brings us to the next part, that image. When you have that image, it, concern, it can be concerning what people see in that. Because there are people out there that are unknowing. There are people out there that don't know about Jesus. I mean, there, there's thousands of them in Bismarck alone. You could walk across the street and probably find 100 people shopping over at Dan's. Maybe not a hundred, but you know what I mean. Uh, shopping over there at Dan's, and they don't know Jesus. They might have heard of him. Everybody's heard of Christmas, you know, but Jesus, yeah. So there's unknowing people, and so they're easily confused. Uh, as it says here in uh, chapter 8, So then about eating food sacrificed to idols. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there were so-called gods, with a lowercase g, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, uh, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things came and through uh, whom we live. <clears throat> but not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. That image of us is defiled. Now, Paul uses um, food sacrificed as at an altar for the imagery of it. And that could really be pretty much anything, honestly, because there's, there's all kinds of idols. I mean, Kurt was talking about sports and the other two services. Um, the small towns that I grew up in... Uh, Drinking at a bar. Um, the company you keep. People can judge you by that. Uh, the, well, the drinking at the bar. That one's obvious. He's a pastor. He's not supposed to be here at a bar. Well, maybe you're called to preach at the bar. Make sure that you are so that you can stay focused on God while you're there. <laughs> so, But the company you keep. Well, who did Jesus hang out with? He hung out with thieves and beggars and prostitutes. So people, you know, not knowing what the real... Jesus, they say, oh, he hung out with all the holy people. No. <laughs> what, the, what story would that have? What value would that have? Honestly, he came for the sick, not for the healed. So the, the clothes that we wear, the people, the company that we keep, um, the clothes. Uh, in, my wife is going through the internship now. I went through it last year. And they, Jerry Dearman uh, is one of the speakers for the OSL, the On Solid Lives, I believe it is, right? And he was talking in one of them about um, new Christians wearing like short shorts and tank tops and all that stuff. They can't dress like that if they're Christian. Well, they can. Who are we to judge? Uh, another thing is tattoos. I have nine. You can't see all of them because some of them are black light, but I am covered in tattoos and plan on getting many more. <laughs> so one of them is why Sarah and I are going to get our wedding rings tattooed on there because... The last one I got her, she served in a tub of popcorn back when we had our movie theaters. But that's, that's whatever. So anyway, I love you. Uh, so the places you go um, is another one. I have a friend who's very, very devoted to Christ. But she goes to the porn shop all the time. Now the thing is, is when she's there, she's not getting it for the pornography. She's there because some, at the store that she goes to, they actually sell like lingerie and things like that. So she's buying it there for her husband. There's plenty of other more appropriate places she could go, but that's where she's at. So people going in there that know that she's Christian, she's in the porn shop. She can't be in here. That's, you know what I mean? Like she's, she's, not, she's not Christian. Christians don't come in here. She's not there for the, she's there to do something to please her husband. Pleasing the husband is godly. Pleasing the wife is godly. Um, some of the pages on Facebook that you like. Um, same thing for Instagram. 
Um, if you go through my Facebook now, it's mostly food. <laughs> like the recipes, um, we're doing like a, a low carb diet, so there's a lot of high protein recipes and all that stuff. And bacon, lots of bacon. Bacon, actually bacon and Star Wars, because I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> some of the channels you watch on YouTube. Uh, I happen to watch one that's mostly on cheese making, because one time I was very, very ill. It was about this time last year, and I was delirious. I had a fever, and about the only thing I could concentrate on was this Australian guy making different kinds of cheese. So <laughs> even now, after that horrible fever has passed, I still just, it's hypnotizing. So <laughs> but it's a distraction. Um, <clears throat> Pinterest, music, TV shows you watch. Um, there's one called Lucifer. Obviously, that one's bad. Supernatural, depending on how you look at it. I mean, it's cheesy, it's hokey, but it's spiritual warfare. Just literal spiritual warfare, but don't get distracted by it because it doesn't work exactly how they do it on there. It's Hollywood, and they took it and ran with it. Um, another one is the language that you use. Now, this is a bad one for me. Um, Swearing. Swearing is bad. I, yeah, I've gotten back in the habit of dropping the F-bomb every now and then, which is not good. Um, but also, sarcasm. Really bad with sarcasm. And to fit that in, I grew up in a small town, and <clears throat> I was a little goth kid. I wore lots of black. It was, ooh, I read Edgar Allan Poe, and I didn't sit in the corner and write poetry. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> And, uh, but anyways, so people come up, oh, he wears black, he must worship Satan. He's reading Edgar Allan Poe as much, he's worshiping Satan. And I got so tired of it that I started, res you know, resorting to uh, sarcasm. Like, yeah, no, I totally worship Satan all the time. Yeah, I'm worshiping him right now. Totally. We're in a church. <laughs> like, it was the middle of worship at the church we were going to, and all of a sudden, yeah, I'm, I'm here as a Satanist. This is where I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so that, because it was a small town and people were weak, rumors were spread that I worshipped Satan. Do I? Where, where am I at right now? So, and morbid humor. Um, yeah, that was also a problem for me for a while there, but I've hopefully, hopefully, and I can continue to come past it. So, it goes on in, in Corinthians to say, be careful, however, that the, ex that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in, idols, eating in an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. So see, people are seeing that. He's a pastor. He's in the porn shop. He's a, he's a, he's a pastor. He's in church. He's right here. He worships Satan. He does all this stuff. I mean, basically it's saying that if, if you're going to go do these things, and there's that chance of someone seeing you and it brings them to question God, then you're better off not doing it at all. This is not to say don't eat your pound of bacon. Don't have fun with your husband or wife. Don't, you know, don't joke. Don't laugh. God loves humor. Keep it, keep it within the realm, you know. But honestly, don't be like Ned Flanders because nobody wants that. Oakley doakley and, and all that. That's just... <laughs> That's irritating. Um, like I said, I grew up in a small town. I grew up where I was managing movie theaters at the time. This was long before I bought one. I was a teenager, young adult, so you know proclivities towards going to a bar and, and all that stuff. Um, I had to keep myself out of these places just so I didn't bring that down on the theater. So people would say, he's not a respectable member of the community. He's at the bar. He's not a respectable. He's, he's you know, out there drinking, getting drunk, and all that. I, it, was, it was something rough. So I missed out on a lot of social interaction when I was younger. And I'm fine with it. I don't care. I had a movie theater. So, yeah. Same thing. Pastor. Being a pastor and getting out there. It's okay to have a beer. Just... Maybe watch what bar you're in. 
it's okay to make a joke. Just make sure it's a clean one, you know? Make sure <laughs> all of that. Because uh, we are human. These things do happen. So, anyway, I'd like to wrap it up with a quick prayer, and I'll hand it back to Kurt. I came up a little short on time. I did better than I thought I was going to. But anyway, so yeah. So, again, dive into this more. Grab your Bible and just read this. Purchase the book that we have. And if, like me, you feel like you're called to be up here and speak, get a hold of Kurt. Get a hold of the church and ask them about what you have to do to get up here and speak. Um, My wife had a revelation last night, so maybe we'll get her convinced to be up here and actually give her own sermon instead of just helping me with mine. Um, i got to thank her for that. She was huge in helping me get this written, especially dealing with that spirit of distraction and confusion that I had this week. Um, Had she actually died, I would be lost. She was my God-given partner. She is amazing and wonderful, and I just I love her to death. So anyway, closing with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for the church and for all the people that come. Lord, we thank you that you gave us this message, and we thank you that we are able to pray, and we have the opportunity to pray, Lord. And again, I just ask that the Holy Spirit be with us all, everyone who's watching online, everyone that couldn't be here today, Lord, everyone that is here. The Holy Spirit be with us throughout the whole week. Lord, help keep our faith big and our attacks small. In Jesus' holy name, amen.